First day of fall. Webster Town Board meeting to order. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dolly, can you do roll call, please? Supervisor Flaherty. Here. Councilman Abbott. Here. Councilwoman Cataldi. Present. Councilman Cahill. Here. Councilwoman Wynn. Here. Town Attorney Genesee. Present. Well, our first order of business tonight is uh, something that uh, Councilman Cahill and Deputy Supervisor uh, Cataldi, I think you're going to come up to the podium up there. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is a presentation in the memory of Charles Stiles. And can we invite the family of you Charles? You absolutely okay. can. Let's meet at yes. the podium. So this is a proclamation in memory of Charles Stiles. Whereas Charlie's life as a public servant was diverse and ran deep through all the years of his life, he was an exceptional man who made you feel you were blessed to be in his life. And whereas Charlie held the positions of Vice President and President of the Webster Central School Board from 1982 to 1989, he was involved in Webster's Community Chest and served on the Webster Planning Board during this time as well. Whereas in 1995, Charlie began his 27 years on the Webster Board of Assessment Review, often serving as its chairman, from which he recently retired. He also became a fire policeman at Webster Volunteer Fire Department and an EMT at Union Hill Volunteer Fire Department, as well as a board member of the Northeast Quadrant Advanced Life Support. And whereas other positions Charlie was involved with through the years was being a member on the Board of Cooperative Education Number 1, and working as an election inspector and coordinator for many years. And whereas, in a word, Charlie was generous, always encouraging others to become the best they could be. Charlie spent his life sharing the knowledge he acquired from books and his own personal experiences. His traditional practices, grounded lifestyle, and beliefs were shared with so many individuals. And whereas Councilman Cahill and the Cahill family became neighbors with Charlie and his wife, Martha, around 2012. Charlie became a mentor to John, both personally and politically. John said both Martha and Charlie were two of the kindest people he would ever meet. Whereas Charlie's devotion to his energy and time for the Webster community has not gone unnoticed. Webster is all the better because of his humble, gentle, and generous spirit. The Webster community thanks Charlie for all he has taught to others in his sacrifices for the good of Webster. As the saying goes, knowledge, you may get it from books, but wisdom is trapped within you, release it. That is just what Charlie Stiles did his whole life. I would also like to add a thank you to Martha and Charlie's entire family for sharing this true gentleman with the community. My family and I thank you for remembering Chuck. We called him Chuck, or Dad, with this proclamation for all he did for our community. We thank you. Thank you, Penny. Thanks, John. Thank I think it would definitely be appropriate to clap. And, um, can I, I just before you do, well, before you do, walk out the door, um, I, Mrs. Stiles, I just I want you to know, and, and Dolly, I think you remember this, and it, it really touched us, uh, and Donna Komar, uh, our assessor, that. 
um, when Charlie, when Chuck, uh, near the end, he uh, called and was so apologetic that he was resigning from the assessor's board over the phone and how it was, you know, in his opinion, it was terrible form and this and that. And I'm like, w where does a guy like this come from? Mm -hmm. That when he is fighting what he was fighting, that he felt like he was letting us down, not giving a formal resignation letter. And I just, I thought to myself, you know, they don't make people like that anymore, unfortunately. Everybody, you know, seems to point the finger at everybody else, blame it. And here was a guy who was, you know, even right to the end, like, so accountable and whatever, felt embarrassed about that. That's something I will never forget. That's yeah. Yes, it is. Unbelievable. <laughs> and I hope if you're at the grandchildren, Remember that about your grandfather, because that is a character uh, aspect that just not many people have. One of the other things yeah. I was thinking as I was reading that all that, Ch that Chuck was involved in. Yeah. And I trust he still had a real job. He had a <laughs> yeah. family, and where did he find the time to be so involved in the community? It, it's just, and, and I consider Chuck a friend as well. He was an incredible man. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good night. Okay. Have a good night. Well, that's a that's a tough one to follow up, uh, but we have to move on. Um, our next uh, agenda item tonight is our open to the floor uh, section, where each speaker will be allowed up to five minutes. Um, and I think we have two speakers tonight, Dolly. Um, and first is Jen Fonseca. Oh, she bought the bags. Now that's a hard one to follow, but um, good evening. I really didn't expect to be here tonight and addressing the board and how the board does re represent our town and our community, the residents that live here. But this is a topic that um, I believe must be addressed um, because it's something that I do fight for each day, especially for our children. Um, and I hope that you will be able to open your hearts and open your minds no matter what side of the aisle you're on with this topic. We do need to be cognizant um, and really think about what we do as a town, as a board, um, and within the offices of our town hall. So I'm going to do some did you knows. Did you know in February 2021, the U.S. was warned about a large number of cases among healthy young people in Israel after COVID vaccination with myocarditis and was designated as a likely side effect of these shots? But yet, the U.S. officials kept and are continuing to recommend vaccination for virtually the entire population. Did you know other side effects reported to VAERS included pericarditis, stroke, autoimmune disease, turbo cancers, infertility, miscarriages, stillborn, births, and even death, as well as other um, diseases? Did you know that in November 2022, and then through a FDA press release in December of 2022, in an official hearing by the European Parliament, asked Pfizer director Janine Small for a straight answer to the question if Pfizer tested whether the jabs reduce or stop transmission. And the Pfizer director answered that no, quote, no research on the effect of these vaccines on transmission was performed. This answer was crucial because the population was under intense pressure to get vaxxed to protect others, keep their jobs, go to school, and to even keep granny alive, quote unquote. Did you know in January 2023, the new COVID variant XBB.1.5, also known as Kraken, which by the way, is the name of a huge sea monster in Nor Norwegian legend, was identified, and that in the spring of 2023, the U.S. government authorized the purchase of a booster product to be made, although this variant was not a big problem, but yet they sponsored Pfizer and Moderna to build vaccines and manufacture them for this fall in anticipation of a surge in the Kraken variant. 
Did you know that in the late summer of 2023, Kraken is basically extinct and a new variant is circulating, which is called ERIS, E-R-I-S. Did you know that this month, September 2023, the booster created and being pushed for this fall does not support the ERIS variant, but yet the drug companies are trying to make a case that this mismatch will somehow protect against this variant? Also, did you know this Pfizer booster was only tested on 20 mice and no results of those tests have been published? Did you know that Mo Moderna booster was tested on 50 people and reported one adverse reaction, which is 2% of that population, but Moderna won't release what the reaction was? Was it a seizure? Did the test subject pass out, present with myocarditis, pericarditis, stroke, death? Did you know that the town of Webster is not a medical doctor and that the town of Webster is promoting this for babies six months and older and adults? That this could potentially make the town or one of us liable if someone is injured or dies with no clinical um, testing or research? I was shocked to see this in last week's September 18th newsletter being promoted by our town. We may never know the true number of people harmed by these jabs, but I bet we all know someone who has been. Please retract this marketing push to Webster residents. Let individuals and their doctors make the right choices for themselves, and hopefully with informed consent to the true effectiveness, safety, and known dangers. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Jen. And next is Michelle Anderson. Good evening, everybody. Um, before I start, I would like to say a big thanks to the Webster Police Department, the Monroe County Sheriff's, and the Town of Arondequoit Police Department for their assistance and guidance in the recent spate of attempted burglaries that we've had in the village. We really do appreciate it. The residents are very thankful and grateful to all of them, and we know that they have our backs. That said, I handed out these um, pieces of paper with a list and websites of individual doctors that are world-renowned for their specialties. You can go to the websites and check them out. One name that I did not um, add to the list, his name is Ed Dowd. He is yep. a former BlackRock analyst who has now become a force of nature in the fight against this vaccination. He has actuarial reports and all of the insurance information that is circulating among professionals that the insurance companies themselves are refusing to release even to their own agents. This is a plague upon humanity, not just the United States. The entire globe is suffering from this. Britain's death rate has skyrocketed. The disabilities are unthinkable, and they will leave people permanently disabled for the rest of their lives, and the rest of us will have to make sure that they are cared for. This was an act of war that no one really seems to be acknowledging, but that's exactly what it was. And if every person does not find out and inform themselves as to what this really was and continues to be pushed on this population by a governor who should be removed from office, and personally I think she should be thrown in jail, she was not elected, and I pray to God she is not reelected, because we are going to pay this price for a very long time. And it has been said, the next generation will not be over with or through the effects of the vaccines that they re received until 2035. Which means the children who got these shots in all likelihood will not be able to reproduce. And if they do, the children that they have will be disabled. So please give this some thought. Read, read the research and, you know, it really is between the doctor and the patient, and I think most doctors now are coming to the understanding that they pushed something they knew very, very little about that was created originally in 2014 to be used as a bioweapon. 
God help us. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. <clears throat> okay, next up is uh, a couple of minutes um, from prior board meetings. Um, two weeks ago, our regular board meeting on September 7th. I've reviewed those minutes. I make a motion that we approve them. Second. Second. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Councilwoman Gataldi? Aye. Councilman Abbott? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilwoman Wynn? Aye. And last week's uh, September 14th uh, workshop, I make a motion that we approve those minutes. Second. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilwoman Wynn? Aye. Councilwoman Gataldi? Aye. Councilman Abbott? Aye. Patty, I think you looked at the bills. I did. I, I uh, looked at the bills yesterday. Everything appeared to be in order, and I would move that we pay them. Second. Second. Councilwoman Gataldi? Aye. Councilwoman Wynn? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilman Abbott? Aye. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. And I have reviewed the prepaid warrants as submitted by the Director of Finance, Paul Adams. I make a motion we approve those. Second. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Councilman Abbott? Aye. Councilwoman Gataldi? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilwoman Wynn? Aye. And I also uh, make a motion to approve the purchase orders as submitted by the Director of Finance, Second. Paul Adams. Thank you. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilwoman Wynn? Aye. Councilwoman Gataldi? Aye. Councilman Habit? Aye. All righty. Um, the next two resolutions, um, I just want to give a brief explanation of this. These are both going to be tabled. Um, they're sequential uh, related to the Coke Fairlight project and w within the se sequence of the town board uh, looking at these two to, to pass these resolutions, um, it really was contingent on the planning board uh, doing a preliminary and final approval of the, the site plan. Is that correct, Josh? That is correct, yes. And on uh, two nights ago on Tuesday, September 19th, uh, for a confluence of uh, reasons, um, the planning board decided to table that until uh, decision on Coke Fairlife's uh, preliminary and final site plans until the Tuesday, October 3rd, yes. regular uh, planning board meeting for the month. Um, that's all the detail I'm gonna get into unless people have questions on it on the board. It's easy to go back and watch the video or look at the minutes when they hit the website of the planning board as to the myriad of reasons why it was uh, tabled to then. But without further ado, it really makes uh, looking at these resolutions tonight um, ones that need to be tabled. Uh, if everything goes well at the, for, for Coke Fair Life at the October 3rd planning board meeting, I would imagine they would be back here on October 5th for these resolutions. Okay. okay. Any questions? No. All right. I make a motion that we table uh, the resolution to approve uh, a fill grading excavation permit for the Fairlight project at the eastern terminus of Tibor Road. Second. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilwoman Wynn? Aye. Councilwoman Gataldi? Aye. Councilman Abbott? Aye. And I make a motion to, con to uh, table consideration of an industrial use permit for the Fairlight project at the eastern terminus of Tibor Road. <coughs> Second. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Councilwoman Gataldi? Aye. Councilman Abbott? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilwoman Wynn? Aye. Well, I guess Paul or uh, <coughs> a little explanation yeah, on this? Yeah, the next question. one uh, is to set the date for the public hearing for the 2024 preliminary budget. Um, uh, the budget, uh, if you want to see the budget, it's actually on the town website. Uh, you'll find it under the finance department. And uh, I believe next week, the Webster today will be mailed out with uh, the complete line-by-line -line budget. Yeah, I think, uh, well, not next week, but the week after. Week after. First week of October. First week of October. It, yep. So, any questions on that? Or? Nope. Nope. All right. I just want to make sure I get this right, Dolly, that the... the the, the public hearing will be advertised 
in which Webster Herald did you see? We only need five days from the date of publication to the hearing, so it could be. This would be the October 11th? Right, yes. Wednesday, October 11th mm -hmm. edition. Okay, so I make a motion to set up the public hearing for the Webster 2024 budget for Thursday, October 19th, 2023 at 7.30 p.m. here in the town boardroom and to advertise said public hearing in the Wednesday, October 11th Webster Herald edition. Second. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Councilman Abbott? Aye. Councilwoman Gataldi? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilwoman Lynn? Aye. Paul? Um, it's funny, when I saw this, I wondered if I should uh, invite Judge DeSalvo or Judge and or Judge Sepler to come and explain, but do you you think you can do a... Uh, they, this is a uh, grant that the court system applies for each year and helps one with capital improvements or whatever their needs are. It's not, it's not a large amount of money. I think last year it might have been a couple thousand dollars, but it does help them with some of the things they need. It's interesting, and I'm going by memory. Um, I think the maximum is thirty-five thousand. Yeah. Uh, but when the grant is submitted, they have to give a detailed line item by line yeah. item of what they're asking for. Um, and I know, like you said, in years past, I know since I've been here, they've been three thousand dollars or four thousand. Right. I think uh, Dave Corator was always of the mindset that if you ask for too much, you're probably not going to get it. So. There's something relatively small that you need. Your chances are better. I'm not sure what they're applying for this year, but okay. Yeah. And from that standpoint, I mean, is, is the board, you know, I mean, when you look at how this resolution is, we're giving the judges really latitude over the next month or so to fill in up to the maximum available, 35,000. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a grant request. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any questions or concerns nope. with how that is? No. None. Okay. Well, then I make a motion to authorize the submission of the 2023-24 Justice Court Assistance Program JCAP application by the Webster Town Court for a request up to the maximum amount available. Second. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilwoman Wynn? Aye. Councilwoman Gataldi? Aye. Councilman Abbott? Aye. Josh, uh, you want to give a brief explanation of the next uh, four and in, in some of the fun that we've had the last one to two months on the, the Zoning Board of Appeals as far as the members and alternates? Sure. Um, so earlier this year, the board may recall that uh, you approved a resolution to add uh, two alternate positions to the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, in the event that regular members are unable to attend meetings uh, just to ensure that applicants uh, have the opportunity to have their applications heard before a full board. Um, so we were successful in bringing two new alternates on board, uh, I believe in March, April. Um, however, two of our um, longstanding board members have indicated uh, that they um, can no longer serve on the board for a variety of reasons. So what these next resolutions uh, essentially entail, uh, filling the terms of those regular members and also restocking the two alternate positions. It's a great way to describe it, restocking. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say this, that uh, two things before we vote on these. Um, I want to thank Tony Kashani and Josh, actually Charlie and John DeMarco. I think Patty, you were involved in this too. As we, as we saw the situation that was in front of us, we said, well, how do we go about in a measured way to vet candidates, identify candidates, and then interview them and make sure we're making a good decision on these candidates? I thought it was a very collaborative effort. Um, we ended up, I think, interviewing six people. Uh, yeah, I believe it was six. Yep. And um, 
So that's one thing. And the other thing I want to say is that, uh, that uh, Barry Barone and Jamie Newtown, uh, the chair of the zoning board uh, and, the, and the, I guess the deputy chair, um, phenomenal move by these guys because they really, they had very legitimate reasons to demur and resign from the board for personal reasons. We asked them because of their experience on that board, can you stay on that board through the Coke Fair Life ruling? It, 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 a project like that can't have three or four rookies of a five-person vo board voting on something as complex as that was. And it shouldn't surprise anybody who knows Jamie and Barry Barone. They, uh, they, they agreed 100% they would stay on board. And that thing got tabled a few times. So I think, Josh, they ended up on there for two more months than they had originally planned. Never complained, did their civic duty, and I, I, I really heartfelt thank you to them. Absolutely. But the Z zoning board took care of the variances, I think, a couple of weeks ago. And as they were true to their word, I think they gave the formal resignation letters to you, Dolly, the day after. And here we are tonight these people will be in place that we're about to do these resolutions on for the next monthly Zoning Board of Appeals meeting on October 10th. Any questions? No. Nope. I make a motion to appoint Daniel Lagener to the Zoning Board of Appeals to fulfill the unexpired term of Barry Barone ending on December 31st, 2023. Second. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Councilwoman Wynn? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilwoman Gataldi? Aye. Councilman Abbott? Aye. I make a motion to appoint Christopher Santola to the Zoning Board of Appeals to fulfill the unexpired term of Jamie Newtown ending on December 31st, 2027. Second. Second. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Councilman Abbott? Aye. Councilwoman Gataldi? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilwoman Wynn? Aye. I make a motion to appoint Richard Fiola as an alternate member of the Zoning Board of P Appeals to fulfill the unexpired term of Christopher Santola ending on December 31st, 2025. Second. Second. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Councilwoman Gataldi? Aye. Councilman Abbott? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilwoman Wynn? Aye. <clears throat> And I make a motion to appoint James Spampanato as an alternate member of the Zoning Board of Appeals to fulfill the unexpired vacant position of the term ending on December 31st, 2025. Second. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Councilwoman Wynn? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilwoman Gataldi? Aye. Councilman Abbott? Aye. And just to put a ribbon around that, that last one, the vacant position, that's because I think a few months ago we moved Michael Short from alternate to the full board position. That's right, correct, yes. And board members uh, stick around because I, I'm, a, I'm, sh I'm sure within the next month we'll be doing a resolution on the z zoning board chair, one step at a time. We need to get the crew together and kind of figure out who would be best suited to be the chair, so. All right, Josh, what you got on this one? Okay, so um, the board may recall um, there was an application before them uh, in early August for a telecommunications uh, microcell facility, which is a rooftop installation on top of the Cherry Ridge uh, property on Ridge Road. Um, the town code requires a special use permit due to the uh, zoning district that that property is in. Um, so the board referred the application to the planning board um, and the, that application was heard at the September 5th planning board meeting. Um, it did uh, receive site plan approval and a favorable recommendation. Um, so now it is back before the board uh, for what will be a special use permit in October. Uh, however, there's a public hearing that's required uh, as a part of that. So this next resolution is to set that public hearing for uh, the next meeting on Thursday, October 5th, and it would be advertised in the Wednesday, September 27th edition of the Webster Herald. Any questions? Nope. All right. 
I make a motion to set a public hearing for Thursday, October 5th, 2023 at 7.30 p.m. here in the town board room associated with the installation of a microcell telecommunications facility at 900-965 Cherry Ridge Boulevard to be advertised in the Wednesday, September 27th edition of the Webster Herald. Second. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. Councilwoman Wynn? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilwoman Gataldi? Aye. Councilman Abbott? Aye. Um, I think we started a little tradition uh, a week or so ago that <laughs> the liaison to the department does the resolution um, on the uh, recycling and, and all that. That's the bad news, John. The good news is I think Charlie John, John's not here. The, yeah. Um, <laughs> Charlie, didn't you say that there can be like a blanket? I, you don't I have think, to read them all off. I think so you can counsel. Yeah. It's, it's already published, I think. You, right. You, 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 you can counsel Councilman Cahill on how to read that. I move that we declare the following items for recycling as, as printed on this document. Um, that's my motion. Second. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilwoman Wynn? Aye. Councilwoman Gataldi? Aye. Councilman Abbott? Aye. Supervisor Flaherty? I, I, well, I guess Patty, you. I get the easy one tonight. <laughs> I move to declare the following item for recycling from the sewer department, a Trimble GIS unit asset tag 3378. Second. Second. Councilwoman Cataldi? Aye. Councilman Abbott? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilwoman Wynn? Aye. Supervisor Flaherty? Aye. And that concludes our uh, formal uh, agenda tonight. Mr. Supervisor, I would like to request a very brief uh, executive session to deal with a matter of existing litigation. Mm -hmm. uh, so that would be under uh, Public Officers Law 105.1D. I'm going to make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Who is invited? Uh, just me. I thought the chief was here. Uh, I, I, yeah, that's an interesting because I, I, I we're, we're, we didn't cross we cross lines here. Okay. Because I was going to make that a motion, but this is more about a personnel issue, and I was going to invite Chief Comar. No, it's actually a lawsuit. No, no, this isn't a personnel. Um, so can we do two? Yes. Are, are you suggesting we have one for two different things? Yes. You that can is do correct. That. Because I think what you want to go over, Chief Comar, it has nothing to do with. Um, or does it? Uh, not it exactly. I mean, yes and no. It does involve the police department. Yes. <laughs> okay. Cover uh, all the bases, Tom. We're good. What's that? Cover all the bases. We're good. I think we just did. Yes, we did. Okay. And I think we approved the motion. Yes, we uh, did. It's 801. We will let you know when it's uh, that. That means that, I hate to tell you, everybody, everybody, the meeting is over. Um, and that is that. We will shut down.